everybody, Ben Woodruff here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a petroglyph, or sorry, a pictograph in Utah, an ancient piece of rock art that may depict a giant ground sloth. This is my first time seeing it, and I can't help unsee it. I can't help but notice it. Now, if you watch this channel, you're aware that uh, I, I'm a paleobiologist, so I have a background in a lot of Ice Age animals. There's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of times where humans and Ice Age animals crossed over. And these people saw these Ice Age animals and rarely depicted them. Now, that's kind of a tricky statement, too, because every animal alive today technically is an Ice Age animal. So more modern tribes that hunted buffalo that depicted buffalo and rock art, technically that is humans depicting an Ice Age animal. But I'm talking about animals that are extinct very recently. And the thing about that is, for whatever reason, sometimes people did not depict the animals they lived with, and sometimes they did. Um, in Utah, we have uh, very much confirmed, you know, some Colombian mammoth rock art in the Bluff area. We also have the famous Moab mammoth that appears to be much more recent, but I still believe is a mammoth or a mastodon depicted. And these kind of things come up from time to time. And if you watch my videos, you've seen other times where I've also shown other animals that are either extinct or regionally extinct that are no longer there. For example, depictions of grizzly bears and grizzly paws, which are very different than black bear paws in areas that grizzlies no longer exist. So that's a regional extinction. So I always get excited about this and people always like to give me a hard time and I accept that. But I also want to push back and say, always be open to the possibility that you might be wrong because here's the problem in academia. What we find is people don't want to make a mistake and look like a fool. So we play it safe. So for example, if we said, oh, the most, the last Colombian mammoth that we can date, let's say is 10,000 years ago. Well, you obviously didn't find the very last one. Statistically, that's impossible. And statistically, most likely the last of any species died out there somewhere and rotted away in a way that didn't get preserved. So you assume that if this is your cutoff date, there's an understanding in academia, this unspokenness. It's like, well, clearly they would have lasted longer after that to some point. You know, the thylacine in Australia and Tasmania, it was listed as extinct in the early 1900s, but there were still credible sightings that went on even until today. But, you know, they, the belief among academia is like, okay, well, clearly they lasted into the 1970s, probably. You know, there's some, there's some crossover. We don't talk about it. It's kind of forbidden to make, make this the case. There are so many Native American stories in the Eastern tribes in North America, uh, referring to things that seem to be mastodons and seem to be giant ground sloths. And uh, the cutoff, you know, we normally say the Ice Age, give or take, ended roughly 10,000 years ago, but we have credible, um, you know, sites and datings of sloths much more recently, giant ground sloths. Now, before we get into this, um, let's talk a little bit about the animals themselves, okay? So first of all, sloths, um, there are modern day tree sloths and tree sloths did not evolve from giant ground sloths. They are both part of a bigger taxon called Xenartha. Now Xenartha has the true anteaters, which is a few anteaters left alive today. And they're a big, wild, crazy animal that have a lot more in common with sloths. If you actually look at how they're built and how their skull is, you know, they're elongated, but they're, you know, um, the armadillos. You know, the whole armadillo family, which again, we've got armadillos today. We've got many species of armadillos, including the giant armadillo. But during the Ice Age, we also had glyptodons, which were like armadillos the size of a small car. So that's a recent extinction, but we still have a lot of armadillos. And then we have tree sloths alive today still. All of these are cousins of ground sloths. Ground sloths branched off from the same lineage as tree sloths a long time ago, and the tree sloths are still here. The ground sloths are not. Now, the biggest of them, like this guy here, Megatherium, uh, this is the size of an elephant. It's enormous. But there's much smaller ones, like uh, the Jefferson's ground sloth, named, after, named by Thomas Jefferson. Um, and there's... Uh, you know, there's uh, the Shasta ground sloth and the California deserts. 
highlands eating, you know, things like, uh, you know, Joshua trees. So there were, there were, there were giants and then there were some, you know, roughly like a Jefferson's ground sloth, kind of like the size of a grizzly bear. And this is kind of the kind I'm thinking of, of what we're talking about today. So, but these guys went extinct so recently that in the 18, well, in the, well, earlier than that, Thomas Jefferson, when he sent out the Lewis and Clark expedition heading west, people in his area were finding ground sloth skeletons so recent that they were just regular bones. And he expected that, hey, you know, when you go out west, you're going to probably find ground sloths. Here's roughly what they look like. Here's the skeleton. Please, if you see them, document them for me and maybe bring back a specimen. So he actually sent out Lewis and Clark specifically looking and keeping their eyes out for Jefferson's ground sloths. That's how recent. Now, this still carries on today. In, I think, uh, 2022, a man named Kevin Atkins in, uh, in West Virginia, he was turkey hunting, and he happened across just a regular skull. And it dated back, you know, all, all the way to the Ice Age. But again, it's still so recent that these bones are still turning up, in, and they're not fossils. These are just bones. So sloths went extinct very recently. Now, uh, we know there was rich human interaction with them. There are a South American taxon that moved northward into North America. And in South America, they dug caves, enormous caves. We have the caves still, and they're big enough that you can walk in and you can see where they uh, clawed the sides with their big, enormous claws. I don't, I don't know if I have a... I have a... There we go. Giant ground sloths had enormous claws. This claw itself... This is the bony core. The claw would have gone much bigger, much further out. This went to this guy. The ones like Jefferson's ground sloths that I showed earlier, much smaller, but still long claws, like grizzly bear sized claws. So we know in South America that these were hunted. We know people encounter them in caves and people depicted them. We have instances with ancient uh, petroglyphs and pictographs where ancient people seem to have depicted their encounters with giant ground sloths. And we know that was something of significance, probably a food source, probably uh, very crazy, you know, maybe had some sort of spiritual meaning. And we know that the ancient people did this as well with armadillos. Uh, the Maya people and people throughout Mexico have many depictions of armadillos. And so we know that that was something reverential to them. We don't see that with anteaters. We really don't see depictions of anteaters and we're not sure why. Which didn't have that much meaning to them for whatever reason. Um, but you had these tropical giant ground sloths, but the ones that moved north adapted to these northern climes all the way up to the Arctic. We find ground sloths in the Arctic. These probably were not very common, but we find human interaction with them. We even have one with some mummified skin that was found, I believe in Nevada, but in one of the deserts. And it was interesting because it fell down uh, a cave and then uh, bats up above in the cave pooped on it. <laughs> And the poop built up over the time and kind of mummified part of the skin. So it's amazing what is still out there even to be found. But you, if you saw an animal like this, if you're getting towards the end of when they were still around and you saw one, that would leave an impact on you. This is a strange animal. We're going to depict it. But there's no confirmed depictions of ground sauce in North America. However, the other day, I was at a Barrier Canyon site. Now, if you know, I, I, am, I get ex really excited about Barrier Canyon style uh, rock art. It's painted, not petroglyphed on. It's not chiseled, it's, it's pictographic. So it's, you mix high glue with earth pigments and you mix them together, hot, you know, hot, paint it on and it stays, it sticks forever and it lasts. Well, Barrier Canyon style is very ghostly and it mostly depicts these kind of uh, spooky looking images of, of humanoid figures. But occasionally there's animals and some of those animals are kind of strange. Some of those animals are easily recognizable and some of them you're like, eh, that could be something unique, but it might just be a rudimentary art style depicting something normal. But the other day I was at a site and this site is well known because it has very strange images, like it has some that almost look like they have angel wings on. Uh, and again, these date back at least 7,000 years and maybe all the way back to 10,000 years ago. But you know, sloths crossed over at least to 7,000 years ago and probably far more recently. 
So there's crossover between the Barrier Canyon style artwork people and the ground sloths, like smaller ones like Jefferson's, like the Jefferson's ground sloth here, and, um, and the Shasta ground sloth, very famous Shasta ground sloth. These are kind of narrower snouted, but these are animals that are, they amble along and they walk on their hands like uh, the front feet like a gorilla. They, they, you know, to protect their claws. And then they reach up and they grab plants and they tear down like, you know, uh, Joshua trees and, and, you know, sagebrush and different plants, junipers to eat the berries. So this is what they were doing. This is so recent that we have caves with big piles of sloth poop. And we've done the DNA tests on it. It's not a fossil. It's just fought, it's just piles of sloth poop where they came in these caves and slept and then would come out. So. This is a very recent extinction. These people interacted with these animals. These people hunted and killed and ate these animals. They saw them, they knew them. Why did they never depict them? We don't know. Um, maybe they did and we just don't recognize it. But this is the kind of the dawn of art, especially in the new world. So what does that mean? What am I getting at? Well, at this Barrier Canyon site, I saw an image and to me, it screams out ground, ground sloth, a smaller species like a Shasta ground sloth or a Jefferson's ground sloth. It's, it's up, it's got longer front arms, it's reaching up, and it's got a head shape. It's, and some people have tried to say, well, maybe it's like a bear. It doesn't look like a bear. That's not a bear head shape. It's kind of got an elongated, narrowed head that kind of comes straight out from the neck. It's kind of got a hump back, not like a bear. To me, this looks all the world like a ground sloth. Now, I 100% could be wrong. There's no way to know. But the people who would like to dismiss this proposal simply because they want to, that's not good science. Good science is saying, hey, we know that the people who did the Barrier Canyon art style lived to encounter ground sloths. Therefore, it's possible that this could be the image of a ground sloth. Maybe they saw one of the one of the last remaining ones, you know, they, they crossed over in time, so, and decided to depict it. All, all the world to me, when I see just the posture, it's upright, everything else at this site, all the posture of all the animals are normal. They're not like lip, jumping around. Everything's just normal, nice horizontal side view. And this one is reared up. And it's not like paws, it's not like it has claws. And, you know, and the tail even kind of looks stumpy, you know, just like a ground sloth. So it may not be, but the possibility that it is, is thrilling. We get excited if we see images in America of what might be a mammoth. There's only a few mammoth and mastodon potential images. And when we see them, we get super excited. And it's understandable because you know, that's clear. And, you know, a big hairy elephant's a big hairy elephant. It's pretty easy to see. The body shape of a ground sloth, admittedly, is somewhat similar to a lot of other animals. And if you're a person with not the most artistic skills, then it's understandable that you, you might be depicting something different and it ends up looking like a ground sloth. But it's possible. And that's thrilling. That's exciting. This may be the only North American depiction. Because again, there's a few South American depictions and that's really exciting. Um, but have a North American depiction potentially of a ground sloth, it's exhilarating. I wanted to share that with you and get your thoughts. Um, we don't talk a lot about sloths. We need to picture the Southwest. We need to picture these tribes because you know there's kind of the end of the ice age, but there's this whole archaic period after where we have amazing art from these people, but we don't know much else. We find their projectile points and their tools, but we don't know a lot about what their shelters looked like, what their beliefs were like. We see a lot of ghostly images painted, and we see a lot of uh, heads that almost look shaped like E.T. at these sites. They had a very different way of thinking and a very way, different way of seeing the world than the tribes of the past 2,000 years, and especially the past 1,500 years. These are tribes that have direct connections and direct belief systems to modern tribes that we can trace back and we're like, oh yeah, okay, 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 I see what you're saying. But these people are so far back that even though they're people of the new world, they're people with a different worldview and a different self-view. But they encountered giants that are no longer here, like giant ground sloths, like this guy back here. What would it be like? What would it be like to be, when I go out to these desert regions, when I see 
I have to factor that into my head that the, okay, these, you might encounter a mammoth down one of these washes. You might be just going down this canyon and, oh, you hear a trumpeting sound. You don't know what it is. And it's one of the last remaining isolated mammoth populations. Or you're out there in the high desert and you're out there kind of in the Joshua tree country or you're in juniper tree country and you hear a sound and there's a strange smell and you go off into the junipers and you see a Shasta ground sloth eating juniper berries, reaching up like this, you know, reaching up in this side view you see in this, in this painting and reaching up and gathering down and eating juniper berries, which would be sweet to its sensibilities. And you're just like, wow, what is this creature? And then you end up painting a depiction of it on this rock art panel. It's amazing to think. It's amazing to imagine. Now, I could be way off on this, but the arguments that I'm wrong are no more valid than the arguments that I am right. This does look like a ground sloth, and the people who painted these images lived at the same crossover time as the last of the ground sloths. So if it's one of the last of these, and they're starting to wane and be a novelty, then maybe seeing one would be worthy of commending that image to a rock art panel. So it's a valid argument. And just dismissing it because a date doesn't work well in your mind, it's not good science. You've got to be open to the possibilities. So I wanted to share that. Let me know your thoughts. You think I'm way off? Let me know. If you think it's possible, plausible, I, I think I give a pretty good argument of why it could be. But as I am checking out all these Barrier Canyon sites in the West, that's one of the things I'm noting is if there's an animal image, what is it? Because now I want to start looking and looking back at old images and seeing some of the weird shapes I've seen. Could they also possibly be a ground? So they might be. They might be. It's so worthy, worthy of getting that sort of information out there so that other people can also share what they have found. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed me sharing my random thoughts on the subject. Uh, if you haven't already, if you did subscribe to the channel, very much appreciates. Uh, I appreciate it. It helps keep me up and going, keep this uh, channel going in a good direction. But always remember that life is a gift. So never stop learning and never stop exploring. We'll see you next time.